Hello, and welcome back to more Terraria with Brian. Since the last time I've seen you guys, I have done a ton of stuff off camera, some of which may be suggested by some of the inventory that I have. There's a whole lot to tell, so let's just try to get right to it. Uh, I decided that I wanted to try to craft a lot of items that I hadn't previously crafted before, and mostly kind of like weapons and guns and things, because for the Wall of Flesh fight, I need as much kind of damage per second as I could get, and so I wanted to try out a bunch of different weapons uh, to see what they were like. And there were a number of weapons that I hadn't actually like created or used before that I was capable of making. Uh, and so let's take a look at some of them. One of them is the sand gun. It's a superior sand gun. It fires sand uh, at enemies, and it hits pretty hard as well, and then it like leaves these sand blocks uh, where things hit. The sand gun... In order to create it, uh, you needed to get antlion mandibles from the desert, and so I spent a whole lot of time. If we uh, back out and take a look at the desert, you can see I flattened a big section of desert over here, and I just spent a lot of time running back and forth, killing antlions until I was able to farm all the antlion man mandibles that I needed. It also takes illegal gun parts that you have to buy from the arms dealer at night. Uh, but it is a good gun. It hits for 35 range damage with whatever other accessories and things I have going on. Uh, which is very good. Uh, it shoots pretty fast, like you can fire it. And since sand is the ammunition, like, your ammunition is not going to run out uh, very easily because it's just sand. And so you can even go and, you know, pick the sand back up after you shoot it. And you can also, you can, like, use it as a wall. Like, I could, like, you know... <laughs> shoot sand blocks the right way, like against a wall, like up inside here, and like block off enemies. It has a lot of weird uses. You can also end up hitting yourself with it, uh, because sand does suffocation damage, and so, for example, if I were firing at a guy and I accidentally fired straight up, well, apparently if it hits those things, that does like, uh, stalactites or something, I guess it doesn't bleed the sand. But yeah, I just dropped some sand on myself there and took some suffocation damage. So you have to be a little bit careful with this weapon. Uh, but it seems like a pretty good weapon, um, and hits for a lot of range damage, and so that is good. Something else that people told me to craft is the Phoenix Blaster. Uh, it uses normal, like, musket shot or meteor shot. It also can fire very fast. Uh, let's go ahead and be firing at this guy uphill. Bam, 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 bam. You have to click the button each time. Uh, it does, I have an Unreal Phoenix Blaster, which does 27 range damage. Unreal, I believe, is the best possible, like, enchant forging thing that you can get on a gun. When I originally crafted this thing, I think you crafted out of Hellstone bars and, like, the handgun or the flintlock pistol or one of the older guns. And when I originally crafted it, it was broken. It had, like, one of the worst possible enchantments on it. Uh, it was like minus 20% damage, and I don't remember what. And I reforged it once. <laughs> and with one reforging, I got Unreal. Plus damage, plus speed, plus critical strike, plus velocity, plus not knockback. And so I think that's the best Phoenix Blaster that you can get. Uh, and so I did that first, and then I realized the Sand Gun existed, which had even more range damage. And so I decided I would switch to that. And then... <laughs> I was looking through all the other things I could craft. I never crafted the meteor gun back in the day that you made out of meteorite. Uh, but it turns out that you can upgrade that into the star cannon, which shoots fallen stars as ammo. And so I have not tried firing this thing yet, but 58 range damage sounds absolutely freaking amazing. And so I want to find a good... <laughs> Something to shoot with this thing and see how fast it shoots. Okay, here comes the zombie. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna try the star cannon for the first time ever. I've never used this weapon. Whoa! And it fires fast, too. And to die? No, you can't pick back up the stars. So that's the one thing. The ammo is very expensive because fallen stars are somewhat hard to come by. Actually, let's go walk across the surface while we find more things to shoot. Um, and perhaps I'll be able to pick up some more fallen stars on the surface. But I want to get a sense of how fast this thing shoots, because I think this might have to be the weapon that I use against the Wall of Flesh, the next boss. Because it's going to be important to hit him as, as fast and as hard as possible. 
Let's go over to the desert, which will be nice and flat, and then I can, like, shoot some guys and some level ground. So, that's part of what I've been upgrading, uh, is my weaponry in that respect. You may have also noticed that there are a bunch of different swords in my inventory, uh, because it turns out there is another sword that I can craft out of four, there's a fallen star, out of four previous swords. And I figured we would do that on camera. Um, and so we're gonna head over to the corruption to do that, because apparently you need to craft that new sword at a demon altar. Uh, and so we will check that out. Hey, another fallen star, great. So here is the desert that I have flattened out, so I can just run back and forth across it. Because uh, during the daytime, you can fight, um, whatever they're called, antlions. But where's the flat part? Here's the flat part, here we go. And the antlions, just like the sand gun, like shoot sand at you, and so all the little places that you see like a little one high hump of sand in the desert, like right here, uh, that's from where antlions have been shooting at me, and that's where the sand dropped that they were sh firing at me. At night, it just is populated with zombies and the usual nighttime enemies. But in any case, I'll relight this up. Let's try using the star cannon against some zombies. All right, bam, bam, bam. Oh, this thing shoots really fast. So the unfortunate thing is it means I'm gonna use up all of my ammo, but the combination of shooting that fast, like how, how, how hard was I just hitting these zombies? 54, 58, and it's like penetrative damage. Like, it just flies right through them and keeps hitting the next enemy behind them. That is a freaking amazing weapon. Alright, so that's going to be super useful. I'm going to head to the Corruption, and we will craft the next sword. Alright, here we are at the Corruption, where there are Demon Altars, which is the crafting station one needs to create... da da da, -da Knight's Edge! It takes Light's Bane... Which is a sword that I had never made. It's a sword that you make out of Demonite and Shadow Scales. Uh, and I just never bothered to craft it before, and so I crafted one, and I didn't even notice. Apparently, it is also broken. It's one of the worst possible enchantments, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to use it. I've got one of my crummiest Muramasas. Uh, my bulky blade of grass was the only blade of grass that I had. And I really liked my old fiery greatsword, and so I crafted another one that's not quite as good, uh, because that is the other crafting ingredient. But if you put these four things together, we will make Knight's Edge. <laughs> and if I can actually get out of my inventory and click, there we go. Okay, it's a small weapon, but it hits for 52 melee damage. And apparently I got one with extra knockback. I'll probably reforge this and see if I can get an even better version. Uh, assuming it's not that expensive, but I think this is the best pre-hard mode sword that you can get. And yeah, if that hits for 52, and this thing hits for 58, yeah, I think I'll actually have a shot against this uh, next boss that we're going to fight. But there's still more things to talk about. Oh my goodness. So let me head back to the base. <laughs> Ooh! Eskimo coat! I got from killing zombies. I've never gotten that before. I've gotten tons of Eskimo hats. I've never gotten the coat. Uh, and so I wonder if there's a whole full vanity, vanity set of Eskimo armor. Or it's not even vanity, it actually has defense. It's actually like real armor you can use. Fascinating. <laughs> Alright, let's go head back to the base. And you will see something else amazing that I've been working on off camera. Well, somewhat amazing. My new home! I've started making lots of rooms for the NPCs. I have not finished. But I guess this is a good time to talk about what I have built. I have revamped my inventory system a bit and made houses for most of the NPCs. I think there's still three NPCs I haven't made the houses for, uh, but I made themed houses for each of them. So I guess let's go through and talk about the housing that I made. Uh, so this is just, you know, my main inventory area. Over here we have the house of the merchant. It is made out of platinum brick walls. Uh, or platinum brick wall in the background and platinum bricks all around. It has glass furniture in it. Uh, it's got a glass window and a platinum chandelier. And basically, you know, the merchant, he spent all of his life making money and so he just wants to show it off, but he doesn't have a lot of kind of taste or aesthetics. And so he's just got all of this nice stuff, but it's kind of a boring looking place. Uh, but that's the house that I made for the merchant. The arms dealer 
is a very shady character. He is the guy who sells me the illegal gun parts at night that I use to make the uh, sand gun. And so he lives in this kind of dark, cramped little area. It's made out of obsidian bricks and it's got like a brick background that's red. It's lit with a demon torch and a water candle for kind of like mood lighting. There's a hanging skeleton on the wall. It's got like one of these mossy spider chests uh, in here and some of this gothic furniture that I got out of the dungeon. And so that is the house for the arms dealer. The witch doctor, who we haven't done a whole lot with, I figured he's got like this crazy, you know, witch doctor outfit. It looks like he should be living in kind of a jungly area. And so you can buy flower glass background from the dryad. And so I use that as the background walls of his place. I use the living wood stuff that I got out of the trees and an ivy chest from the jungle inside his place. He's got a green candle from the jungle as well as a water candle kind of lighting up his place. And so I think that's one of the most unique rooms. And he lives over here next to the party girl. Uh, the party girl, I decided I was going to make her place out of pink brick that we got out of the dungeon. It has lots of pink dungeon furniture. Uh, it's got an ivy chest. And it has silver brick walls in the background, which is just kind of all glitzy and glamorous. She's got a little vase and a candle uh, and a bed inside her place as well as uh, a crazy painting that looks colorful. For some reason, I don't know, I just felt like the party girl, she seems like the kind of girl who might be interested in the witch doctor. Like he's all, he's wearing this crazy outfit, but I imagine underneath there, there's like tattoos and all kinds of stuff. And it just seems like the two of them would make a good couple. And so I wanted to put them together. So that's what I did for their houses. We go over onto the other wing. We've got the houses of the mechanic and the goblin tinkerer and so these two they have like a crush on each other like in game when you talk to each other when you talk to them like they ask about each other and they are also like the most mechanically inclined folks and so i wanted a kind of industrial feel to their place and so the walls are made of demonite ore uh, which I figured was a very strong material, you know, they're always building new things that might explode or who knows what, and so I didn't want to use any wood or flammable materials in their place. And so I made it out of demonite ore. Uh, the wall, this gray background, is kind of like a snow wall. And inside their place I put the various material making apparatus I have. We've got the extractinator over here, as well as the... I forget what this thing is called. The Blendomatic uh, is some of these crazy, you know, things. The Blendomatic is used to make the asphalt uh, that you can run fast on, and the extractinator, you throw the silt and the slush in, and it gives you different ores. Um, and these guys just coincidentally have kind of decorated their places somewhat similarly. Uh, since the Goblin Tinkler, oops, since the Goblin Tinkerer, who I apparently just moved his house, uh, is a goblin. I decided that goblins live with mushroom furniture, and so he's got a mushroom chair and a mushroom table inside his place. He's also got the anvil. Uh, and the mechanic, she has got, I decided to put all of my redstone things in a chest in her place. It occurred to me that it would make sense to kind of like, to spread out my inventory that was kind of all cramped inside here. Some stuff that I don't use very often, like my red wire stuff, I would go ahead and put with the mechanic uh, who sells you all the redstone stuff. I'm calling it redstone, it's not really redstone. I also made a five second timer that every five seconds switches on and off. And it is powering this little lamp because I figured since she's the mechanic and she sells all of this red wire stuff, it seems like she would have some crazy red wire stuff inside of her place. And she's also got an ebon wood table and chair, as well as a picture of the destroyer, which is a mechanical worm, uh, in the background of her place. And then finally up here, we've got a couple of guys that I don't know very well. We've got the, the dye trader and the painter. And I haven't really worked with them. I made snow bricks as their place. I understand that you can like buy paint and then like paint the walls and paint bricks different colors. And so I figured I would paint these more colorfully because these seem like colorful characters. But I haven't gotten around to playing around with paint yet. And so I haven't done any of that yet. Uh, but that was kind of my plan for this place. And so I wanted to use kind of whitish bricks so I could paint them different colors once we eventually you know, go and buy some paints and do all these things. But I haven't played around with that yet, so we haven't done that yet. 
And then there's still a few folks who I haven't made rooms yet in the new house. We have the demolitionist. I haven't figured out what his themed room would be. We have the dryad. I haven't figured out what I want to build for her. And finally, if we back out on the mini-map, uh, the clothier is still living over here. Uh, and so I still have to make a house for him. If you take a look at the mini-map, you will also notice that I've explored a lot more. I've gone into the jungle a few more places for reasons I'll describe in a moment. Done some more exploring over here as well. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot more lit up on the map. One of the reasons that I went back to the jungle is that if we go back to my inventory, I am now wearing lightning boots. I basically went through all of my accessories and handed them to the guide, because when you hand an accessory to the guide, like he tells you the different things that you can craft out of it. Here, let's do a quick example. So for example, I have the Violent Lava Charm, and I can ask him, and it turns out that you can combine that with Obsidian Water Walking Boots, and I've never found any water walking boots, but that sounds very interesting, into Lava Waders. And so I was doing that with all of my accessories, and I discovered, for example, that I could convert the old Spectre boots that I was wearing into something more powerful, uh, but it needed an aglet and an anklet of the wind. And an anklet of the wind was an accessory that I had not gotten yet, and was an accessory that you could only find in the jungle, and so I did a bunch of jungle exploration until I found that. Um, let's see... I think that catches you up on a number of things. Let me go ahead and put away some inventory real quick and see what else we need to talk about. There is still more to talk about. There's still more to do, but I'm going to have to save it for the next episode. I have been trying desperately. I'm going to be gone for about two weeks going to Florida for Minecon and some other travels. And I've been trying desperately to make sure that I have still daily episodes coming up the whole time that I'm gone. And I'm just about there. Sorry for having some shorter episodes lately. You might see, as we just passed, uh, something that we're going to talk about next episode. But I'm going to go ahead and call it here for today. I hope that you guys are having a great day, as always. And I will see you again soon with more Terraria. Bye-bye.